Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Z, and we are finally back in the game. Thank you very much for your patience, guys. If you don't know why I've been away for so long, then you can check out the community channel. But in a short, I got a concussion, uh, and I didn't really want to be recording videos. Firstly, for my own health, and secondly, because the quality would just not have been good enough for you guys. So we are finally back. And we are here with the Boeotian League in RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6. A little preview on the unit roster and guide once again, guys. And we're going to be going through this really awesome unit roster and talking about how it has been made. So, without further ado, let's talk about the history of this roster, guys. So... After Alexander destroyed Thebes in 335 BC, the Boeotian League kind of retreated to Tanagra and Orchomenos. So slightly different cities from their main city that was previous. And they became the leading cities within the League. Thebes was refounded in 315 BC, uh, but it really didn't manage to get back up to its height of strength before Alexander destroyed it but amongst the warfare amongst all of greece and the hellenistic east the boeotians tried to stay neutral ish as neutral as they possibly could and they stayed neutral until the mid third century when supposedly the friendly people to the east the aetolian league decided to invade their neighbor the boeotians overnight and they destroyed their army in the Battle of Chironea. This defeat really did humiliate the Boeotians, and they made them subservient to the Aetolian power in the region. So as a reaction to this, the authorities reformed the Boeotian army, introduced new elite regiments, and including Macedonian phalanx and some cavalry as well with shields. With the new armies, they were then able to liberate themselves from the Aetolian domination, although the conflicts in the region did plunge the Greeks into yet another crisis at the end of that century. So that's why when we look at this unit roster, guys, we have a reformed troops over here. We have phalanx units as our reformed troops. We don't start with them. And we have shielded cavalry as our reformed cavalry. So that is the reason why... The uh, units are as they are. So without further ado, guys, let's get into it. And of course, we're going to start with the missile troops. Now, let's have a look, first of all, at the slingers. We've seen these guys a lot of times before. And you can see in the Boeotian League, we have a few greens. But we also, if we look at the color palette, there's quite a lot of purple in here. Quite like uh, Syracuse, in a way. Um, so yeah, quite a bit of purple as well, which is really cool to see, because like I've said before, I love purple, especially on military units, guys. I think it looks awesome. Um, so the Greek Slingers, first of all, like we've talked about before, a morale of three, total defense of seven, armor of one, defense skill of six, missile range of 140 with 32 missiles, and a missile attack of four. So these guys really are your basement level troop, the worst troops you're going to get access to. Very, um, you know, they'll still do a lot of damage if they get rid of all their ammo, of course, like all missile troops, guys. Uh, but like we've said in the past, if you're going to take a missile troop into battle, I would take the Greek archers. First of all, because they have three more defense in terms of the defense skill, although no less, no more armor. So their armor really is a big issue for them. They will fall to missiles so quickly, uh, but they do have a missile range only 10 meters less, slightly less ammo, but that extra two missile attack when you consider... Um, you know, 125 missiles being fired by 80 men. An extra two missile attack is a huge amount. Two missile attack per missile they fire is just quite ridiculous. You know, 25 times 80 is uh, 200. Or two, yeah, they'll be firing 200 missiles. So 80 missiles at a time with an extra two missile damage each. I don't know what I was speaking about before. The 200 missiles, I don't know. Um, you'll have to guess somewhere down in the comments below because even I don't know. Uh, but yeah, really, really decent missile unit. Going to serve you well throughout the game, especially when you get your experience up. Not amazing, but 
Fine, fine. And that's what you're going to have to do with for your long-range missiles. Now let's move on to the Akontistai, guys. And looking kind of cool. I like these sorts of outfits over here. Looking really nice indeed. Very nice indeed. Really cool. Really cool. And they've got the hats on. Keep their heads out of the sun. Looking very nice indeed. Twen 12 total defense, of course. One armor, 11 defense skill. A morale of 6. Melee attack of 6. And a missile attack of 9 with their 7 Javi. So a standard Javi unit, the Akontistai. Not quite as good as... The Greek Peltasts that we've seen many times before. They've got their little shields, as we've seen on a lot of people. Oh! That is... That has to be the coolest shield I have seen in a long while. Medusa looking cracked out. <laughs> that is fantastic. That is a great, great shield. I love that. I mean, if you saw the enemy coming towards you and they had these shields... You would be slightly scared, wouldn't you guys? <laughs> they are kind of scary. Uh, very scary looking shield. Awesome shield, really. Uh, but these guys, of course, the Greek Peltas, a lot better than your Akontistai. 23 defense. Only two armor, though, but with three shields, so five defense against missiles. So they're not going to die as quickly to missiles, but they still will die pretty quickly to missiles like we've seen. Uh, 12 morale which is great for a missile unit. 10 melee attack, which is fine as well. And a missile attack of 9 with ammo of 7. I know that says 6, but that's because of these two um, officer boys down here. Yes, so a, a total uh, missile attack of 9 with 6 ammo. And they actually have, yeah, just, just, just a bit more than the Akontistai because they've got those two officers there. As well. 18 defense skill is nothing to sniff at as well, guys. That's quite a decent amount of defense skill. Uh, but as I say, you're going to want to get these guys into missile attack rather than melee uh, and use them. So, so on to the infantry, guys. But firstly, I'm just going to have to adjust something and then we'll go on to the infantry. Right, guys, here we are. And let's start with your lowest level, lowest tier of infantry and you can tell that because they don't really have um everyone doesn't have a helmet we've got these guys with these sort of uh, leather um caps on leather caps you can see them there the scrooge hat i'm gonna call it because uh, it kind of looks like <laughs> the classic image of scrooge's pajama hat or whatever you want to call it your bedtime hat uh, but these tanned leather hats, some of them do have metal helms, as we can see. But a lot of browns in this unit going into sort of the burnt red. And it really does uh, represent itself in uh, the vision of the troops, in the view of the troops, that they are lower tier looking at them. You can just tell that they are lower tier looking at these troops without their armor, etc. But once again, just the detail that's gone into this is just stunning like the tanned hats like look at them let's have a look at that look at the texture on those hats that you can see there and all the little details the tassels the textures on there including the textures down here this guy's you know they've got great like um grazes on their knees and their legs and stuff so yeah it's just stunning the amount of detail that goes into these troops once again but let's talk about the Neoniskoi then, sort of the lowest tier. You're going to get a morale of 13, nothing to sniff at. A decent amount of morale for this low tier unit. Total defense of 29, not great. It's not amazing. Uh, but 9 defense against armor, again, is quite decent, as well as a defense skill of 20, which is okay. And a melee, melee attack of 11, which is a bit lower than what you're going to see in a lot of the other sort of infantry units, but it's decent nonetheless. And a missile attack of 13 for their two Javis with a 50 meter missile range. So they're doing quite well. As a low tier unit, guys, I've got to say these guys are quite well rounded, really, when you think about it. Nine armor, uh, nine defense against missiles and 20 defense against non-missiles. That's quite decent, as well as a morale of 13. That's nothing to sniff at. That's quite good. Um, I'm really, really enjoying the sort of well roundedness of these guys as troops. So yeah, as a low tier unit, this is good, but of course, you're going to want to replace these guys very early on with some better, better troops. And you do have plenty of options where that comes from. So let's move on to the Theroporoi. And as soon as we move on to these guys, you can see 
the eliteness just turn up a little bit. The uh, in terms of having the Linothorax on rather than just ropes, they've got the Linothoraces over here. Uh, lots of them on show, and again, look at the little details on these boys. They look fantastic, don't they? I know I've said that so many times, but I have to reiterate the art team in this mod are doing such a wonderful, wonderful job. I mean, this guy looks fully elite, so I don't know what you're doing here, bro. Go and join the Epilectoy or something. <laughs> You've got the uh, the nice elite sort of helmet on there. But the Theroporite, a decent unit, a decent early game unit, 35 defense, of which they have 13 defense against missiles, guys. That's really good. As well as 22 defense skill, which is okay. 15 morale, decent amount of morale, as well as a melee attack of 12. Now, the Theroporite actually don't have any missiles in this, uh, with these guys. They just have just, um, just their spears, of course. No missiles, no javis to throw, unlike the Neoniskoi. So when you're considering who to bring, if you want some Neoniskoi for a bit of flanking action, that might actually be the better option for them because they're the only infantry unit. If we look across the whole bottom here, they're the only infantry unit that has javis, unlike some of the other units in other nations. So it might be um, that you have actually a couple of Neoniskoi just to flank in your armies as well just to throw those javis and then get into the fight kind of acting a bit like a greek peltast but with a bit better melee stats uh, but yeah the theroporite solid unit solid early game unit but they're not quite as good as the hoplites as we're gonna see here look at these boys they look mean they look ready to go and i like the uh, the white color on the plumes here Something we've not really seen. We've not seen any plumes, I believe, so far that were white. Unless um, maybe Athens. Maybe we saw that in Athens. But they look fantastic. I, I love this color on the back of the shields here. And that is just the little details again that go into this. Look at those tiny little details on the back of the strap of the shield there. They didn't need to do that, guys. They didn't need to put all that detail in. Like, when you're playing this game and you're zoomed out, are you ever going to see that? No. But when you zoom in, it makes all the difference to sort of the beauty of these units and why they are so stunning in general. We've got the um, the sort of copper breastplates here as well, which look really cool. Um, and yeah, you can tell these guys are a little bit more elite. But when we compare them to the Theroporoi guys, they have a defense of 39. So four more defense than the uh, Theroporoi. And of course... Most of that comes from two in their shield and then an extra two in their defense skill. So just better overall against the enemy. 15 defense against missiles, guys, is really, really good, I've got to say. A really good, decent defense against missiles. They're not going to fall to many javelins unless you're against, say, the Romans. 15 morale and 13 melee attack. So just one more melee attack than the Theroporoi, but just a bit heavier. A bit better protected. So a better unit than the Theroporite, and I would take these guys over the Theroporite just because they're better in general, in terms of their stats, if you're going to take them in the game. Now, on to your elites, guys, the Epilectoi, and let's have a check, shall we? Cape check, check. <laughs> Cape check, check. Plumes, check. Um, yeah, looking mean. Well, that guy doesn't look mean. He looks dumb with life. So, not a check on that, but we'll find out. Ah, that guy looks mean. That guy looks ready to go. So, check on some of them anyway. <laughs> so, fantastic. But these guys, just look how good they look. And I love the purples and these colors once again. They look fantastic. Look at that looking down there. Absolutely stunning unit. Really, really nice unit. So let's talk about these guys. 45 defense, guys. 45. That's insane. That is close to General's Bodyguard. Spartan General's Bodyguard levels. Um, yeah, 31 of which is defense skill. 14 defense against missiles again. So a little less missile defense than the Hoplites. But that's fine because they're going to be chewing through enemies for fun. 20 morale. So they'll pretty much never break unless... Huge morale shocks come one after the other. And a melee attack of 15, which is awesome for a spear unit. So these guys truly are really elite. And we've got some cool little shields in here. Looking at this guy. I'm assuming that's one of the gods. 
I'm not going to embarrass myself and try and guess who it is. Uh, but yeah, really cool looking shields once again. Now, that one's cool. Look at that club. Um, <laughs> looks like something else for a, for a second there. But I can assure you that's, that's a club. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. Looking awesome. Really cool. My new favorite unit, I think. <laughs> really, really, really nice. Right then, guys. So... On to the reform units. Like we said, the reform units come after um, uh, the uh, destruction of the other cities that the Boeotians um, basically became slaves to the Aetolians. Uh, so yeah, then they reformed into having phalanx units like we said at the start. So our first phalanx unit is the Boeotian Peltophoroi. Looking very, very nice indeed. Gold and bronze running through these guys with their bronze shields that, again, look fantastic. And they are ready to go. Ready to spear the enemy into submission. So let's have a look at some of the stats of these guys and how they stack up to some of the other sort of phalanx units you're going to see during the game. 35 defense is pretty standard for a phalanx unit. 12 defense against missiles, so it's a little less missile defense than the hoplites or the epilecti. But a defense skill of 23 is really good. Now, the morale of 16 is fantastic, and a melee attack of 18. Very similar to a lot of other mid-tier phalanx units that you're going to see. But again, these guys are really good. Uh, really good against most armies. Phalanxes do very, very well uh, in this game, as they should. Uh, because, of course, they're a very, very powerful unit, um, you know, composition. So, yeah, really, really decent mid-tier sort of unit there that's going to be solid and hold the line for you through many, many battles. But let's have a look now. These are the true, true elites of the Boeotian army. And look at that. Is there a better shot to take than that? And in fact, you know what? I am going to screenshot that because that looks absolutely fantastic look at that guy and the detail on the the helmet the shield and they they clearly look so elite we've got the capes we've got extreme plumage i'm gonna say over here extreme plumage all around <laughs> and the capes we know these guys are elite and some very very nice colorful shields in here as well looking fantastic i know i've said fantastic looking glorious we'll go back to glorious we've not heard of glorious yet what a glorious unit very very cool indeed and let's have a look at the stats of these boys 44 defense fantastic defense very very good 14 defense of witches against missiles your six shield and your eight armor very nice indeed decent defense against missiles and a 30 yes 30 defense skill with 21 morale 20 melee attack and even a 14 alt attack these guys are truly truly elite and if you can get your hands on these guys there's not much that's going to be able to stand in your way these guys are going to crush the enemy they are going to crush the enemy like they are nothing like they're a leaf blowing in the wind they will crush them and that that is not an expression and it doesn't make any sense, but I said it anyway. So take that. But yeah, fantastic unit. Very long spears. Very good stamina as well, which always makes a big difference in long battles. Um, and of course, excellent morale. Really, really good. That, that unit excites me quite a bit. So let's move on to the cavalry. And first things first, let's have a look at your general's bodyguard. Here they are, looking very nice indeed. Uh, looking very similar to a lot of the Greek bodyguards have this uh, these plumes on the horses there, which is quite cool, and the leopard skin. Very, very nice. I think it's a leopard anyway. I I don't know. Someone someone let me know in the comments down below. Uh, 34 defense. Nice, decent. 15 armor. Very nice indeed. And 19 defense skill with a 47 charge. Very strong indeed. Only 18 morale though, and a 14 melee attack, which is very good for a cavalry unit. So these guys, again, like I've said, with their small numbers, you don't really want to leave them in, uh, you know, in the fight too long, unless you're fighting other generals' bodyguards and confident you're going to win. Uh, but charging is what they are really, really good for. Now let's have a look at the Prodromoi. We've seen these guys many times before. Your lowest tier of cavalry, but the 27 charge, like I've said in many other videos, guys. 
is not too bad. It's not too bad. It will do some damage. So if you have to use these guys in melee, you can do. Just with that 9 morale and that 10 melee attack, it's not really going to do go too well. As well as that 12 defense. Of course, defense for cavalry, remember guys, is so important because their hitboxes are so large. So having low defense means they die so quickly. Um, so yeah, you don't really want to use these guys in extended melee ever. And only charge them when you absolutely need to. So... On to your third unit, the Zistaforoi that we've seen many times before. 23 defense, so not actually that much defense for this Zistaforoi unit. Um, 8 armor and 15 defense skills, so only 8 defense against missiles. So don't get these guys hit by Javis because they will die, guys. Especially better Javelin units. So try not to do that. Look how long the spears are on these boys as well. Looking very nice indeed. 15 morale, very decent. Solid morale, as well as a solid melee attack of 12 and an alt attack of 11 with a solid charge of 34. These guys are just the heavy lifters, you know. They're nothing extremely special, like the Agama, for example. But they are going to do so much damage. They're going to do all the heavy lifting of your army so that you can crush the rest of the army with, you know, your, your more elite units. Very decent mid-tier sort of cavalry unit there. So let's move on to our reform units, the shielded cavalry, like we've seen before. So the shielded cavalry units um, they actually have a shield, like we can see, the Aspido Foroi. And they have some monster shields. Look how big those shields are for cavalry units. Wow, monstrous, very large. And uh, just uh, a lot of theme of uh, the different sort of patterns and colors on these shields. But again, they look fantastic once again. And a 15 morale, solid morale. How do they compare, say, to the Zistaforoi? Yeah, 15 morale. Same exact melee stats of 15 morale, 12 melee attack, and 11 ult attack. But slightly better on their defense. So you can see they've got two more charge than the Zistaforoi. 34 charge for the Zistaforoi and 36 for the Aspidoforoi. And 27 defense compared to the 23. Uh, and of which, you know, that shield is pretty much... The dominant factor there. So they've got a little less defense skill and armor, but seven shield to add on top. So they're just a better version of the Zistaforo. So when you can get these guys and start replacing your Zistaforo with them, absolutely do that. And again, very nice unit. Gonna not be celebrated too much, but they're gonna do all the heavy lifting. The charges into the back of the enemy with these guys are gonna do some big, big damage. So really, really use them when you can interesting to see that you can see these guys um they don't actually have a regular formation neither do the zista four right uh, I, I guess that's probably just a theme throughout all the armies but yeah no regular formation kind of irregular um can they form wedge so you want to go to you're you're going to want to put them into wedge when you can but that is the roster guys a nice varied sort of rounded roster i'd say for the boeotians you've got your phalanx units later on but you've got a very solid early game infantry over here especially that epileptoid but i'm assuming that they are going to be hard to come by now we are fighting the dreaded uh Aetolian league over here giving you a little bit of a preview of these boys as we can see they look very nice Indeed. Very, very nice. Of course. Of course they do. All the units in this game look fantastic. So, let's come forward. Let's get our boys moving. They actually have one more unit than us. So, we are actually at slight disadvantage. Uh, not too much, though. And we'll get our Prodromoy coming forward, potentially. No, we'll leave our Prodromoy a little bit in reserve to start with. And let's speed it up. Here they come. We're going to take a defensive position this time. Most of the time, we go charging into the enemy. But today, we'll take a little bit more of a defensive position. Maybe... Yeah, we'll leave our missile troops there. We'll get you guys on fire. Well, you are already. Fantastic. Uh, let's come forward. See these guys. Here they come. Get the phalanx units around the flank. Especially that Agama is going to do some serious damage. I hope, anyway. Be a bit embarrassing if they didn't now, right? <laughs> After I've talked them up so much. Uh, but yeah. We'll come forward. And all the uh, the Javi boys. Let's get the Javi boys forward. Let's get you off. Uh... Okay, 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 okay. 
I think their advantage comes in the cavalry, looking at it. They have that one extra cavalry. Oh, they've got the Aetolian cavalry as well. That's firing javis. Let's get rid of his bodyguard unit. It's not his actual bodyguard, but it is a bodyguard unit. Right, boys. Let's get you out of phalanx. Let's get you here. Can we deal with the... Oh, it's Aetolian Aspidophoroi versus the Boeotian Aspidophoroi here. Oh, my God. The Neoniskoi are crumbling in the middle. Absolutely crumbling. Okay. Looks like we're doing well over that side. You guys, let's get you down the middle. And you guys, let's get you over here. Get into that epileptoi. Yes! Our Aspido 4 has won out. Now it's time to get rid of some of their, uh, you know, Javi units, etc. Now we're going to try and fully flank them over here. Whether we can do because of this Hoplite unit, I don't know. So we're going to form it into Phalanx. Okay, they're going actually for the... Uh, for the Aspido 4, right? How did we do over this side? Oh, we lost on this side. So we won one side, lost the other. That's fine. I think we'll be okay. Let's get through the middle. Of course, guys, if you wanted to skip the battle, you can do the chapters are down below. But please do like and subscribe, guys, if we get to that point. Comment as well. If, you are all, if you're still watching, guys, make sure you comment your favorite looking unit down below. And I know there's a lot to choose from because they all look fantastic. Uh, but yeah, comment down below what your favorite looking unit is. Now we're going to really struggle here. Getting charged in the back when we're trying to hold the enemy is never, never a good option. Uh, you aren't doing too much in that position, are you? So let's try and get, say, there. It's going to be hard for them to get there quickly, but we're going to try it. Okay. Yeah, we've got the Prodromoi versus our Aspido 4 right? We should win, although that charge was not great from us. Problem here is our Neoniskoi has our general in. I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> A Greek Peltas are running the wrong way. I don't know why they're going that way. It's kind of scary. Okay. The Elian Hoplites. We need to get rid of them. Now you guys come forward. So they have their Epileptoi. This is the Agama. Come on, the Agama. Let's watch them get it into... So their Epileptoi, of course, is a pretty elite unit as well. Oh, look at the Agama go. Just scything them down with a spear. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, okay. <laughs> That is good. Look at that. Look at the brutal damage they've been doing. Just halt. Get your spears down, boys. Yeah, that's them done. Stuck between a rock and a hard place, I've got to say. Now we've got our, uh, our Peltafori over here fighting these guys. Right then, it's time. Hoplites, we need to get you round. It looks like we might lose this one. Kind of lost. Where is all the cavalry? They're all back here. Bring them back round, but yeah, we might have lost. Looks like we've got the infantry advantage, but, you know, the disadvantage on a lot of other stuff. Um, uh, yeah, we're get starting to get hit by Javis now, which is never good. So let's try and get into these guys over here. Come on, boys. Let's go. Let's kill those Hoplites. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, God. I don't want to deal with them. It's tough. We're getting surrounded now at this point. Get running, boys. Get running. I think we can go after them. Yeah, this is yeah, this is going to be really tough. They've got a lot left, including Thorakitai and a full Aetolian Hoplites uh, unit. Let's get them. Let's see whether we can deal with these guys. Yeah, I think we've, we're done. I mean, the Agama's very, very strong, of course. Um, so is our Peltafori, pretty strong phalanx unit. But yeah, there's so many people to kill here. I think they're going to run rampant through us. We are, of course, playing our hard guys like we always do. Um, yeah, and it is difficult. <laughs> More difficult than you expect in a lot of ways, but very nice. Let's carry on. Yeah, we're going to get surrounded here, and I, I can't see anything other than losing. Where are you, my friend? Oh, you're here. Let's try and do the double flank. They're flanking us. Now we're going to flank them. Let's try and just kill. If we can get that Hoplite unit, we can get the Agama in here. And that will make a bit of a difference, I've got to say. So let's charge. Come on, boys. I know you're a bit tired. Oh, quite a decent charge. Ten died straight away on that charge. We broke him. Oh, God. No, no, no. Turn. 
Oh, Jesus. That was brutal. That was not what we needed. That was not what we needed. Did you see that? The pro that was the Prodromoy as well. Charging into us there. And absolutely ruining us. So you can see that even the Prodromoy, when they get a good charge off against decent units, they can get quite a good charge there and really do some damage. So you can see that the usefulness of the Prodromoy, um, even though when you look at their stats, doesn't seem useful. And they did route, as you can see, after their charge did a load of damage. So, yeah, you know, but... Uh, they still did a huge amount of damage to that Agama unit. That's a very strong unit overall. Um, so, cavalry charges, guys. I'm sure all of you know already. Very strong. <laughs> Always strong. Hammer and anvil. Hammer and anvil. That's our... Oh, have we, um, have we lost our general? Is our general gone? Yeah, our general has left the field. So, yeah, probably uh, morale is going to be gonna be toughy. Toughy, tough, tough. Right, boy. Oh, yeah, there's just no chance. I'm going to start speeding it up now, guys. <laughs> but, yeah, there's not much chance we're going to win this. <laughs> okay, we have destroyed them. They just keep coming back. All right, let's get um, all our boys to go and kill that Akon. That's just an Akontistai. I thought it was a Thorakitai or something. That's fine. We, we might actually win. Good. Get these boys now. They're so tired now. Look how exhausted they are. Okay, that should be it. Who's not routing? Oh, these boys. Let's go. Let's go. There we are. Fantastic victory. Well, guys, I th hope you enjoyed that video. Giving you a preview of the Boetian League and a bit of a guide for their roster. Please do like and subscribe, guys. It does really help the channel out. And if you could uh, comment down below your favorite looking unit, that would be fantastic. So thank you very much for watching, guys. We're back, and I will see you all again on the next video.